and gentlemen, how are you? Welcome to uh, episode 24 of the Tickle Me Comedy uh, podcast. As you can see, I'm by myself tonight. My sidekick, Isaac, is missing in action somewhere. I don't know where he is, but over the last few, uh, uh, after, maybe, yeah, there he is. After the last few episodes, he and I haven't been together, so a lot of you are wondering if we're the same guy. And no, we're not. But hopefully, maybe uh, next week or, or the week after, we'll be back together. He's he's off doing some, some um, I don't know what he's doing, but I hope he's having fun. So anyway, uh, again, welcome to tonight's podcast. Uh, we're brought to you tonight by Tickle Me Comedy and the Blue Zone Comedy Tour. Uh, we're just excited tonight. We've got a great guest, uh, Jason Outlaw. He... Uh, He's a comedian, he's an MC, he's a writer. I had to write cheat sheet down because there's so much stuff here. An actor, an improvisational actor, a producer, a singer, um, uh, and he's a perfect choice for comedy clubs or corporate events. So without any further ado, let me welcome Jason Outlaw. Hi, Jason. Hey, how how's tonight? it going? How's it going? I don't know about a perfect choice. It depends on what club you are, right? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, exactly. They're like, good God, get this guy out of here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you forgot my Chippendales uh, routine. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, breakaway pants and it clears out the room. That's how yeah. it goes. We'll do that towards the end splits. of the show, so stick around. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> stick around. <laughs> stick around. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> this, uh, Wrong choice of words. It's bad when my brain's going <laughs> to, just all over the place already. Okay. So, Jason, <laughs> I haven't seen you since... Uh, Couple months ago, when we did the uh, the drive-in movie, the thing. drive-in, yeah, 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 the drive-in show. That was that was a fun time, man. Uh, tell was, me about your experience with it. Uh, well, I mean, I, it was it was cool. It was a really cool thing. It, it's it, the timing, you know, with with comedians, you know, it's it's about the feel of the audience. There's like that give and take, right, with your audience, and and um, you know, and I'm I'm one of those guys. I'm really big on that. That's that's like a huge part of my act is that is feeling the audience out, and 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 you know, I do different jokes based on that, and it's really hard to read that. Um, when they're in cars, so it's kind of interesting. And also, there's like that extra couple seconds because you know they would honk their horns when they're laughing, and you're like, you tell a joke, and you're like, ooh, did that not land? And then you're like, huh? Oh, like, oh, there it is. Yeah. It's like, you know, it, but it's it's also kind of like when you do like huge rooms, right? Like you, when you do a room with you know four thousand people in it, it, it takes a minute for the joke to get out there and the laughter to kind of bounce back. You know, it's 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 a it's it's a little different. But no, it was it was fun. It was an awesome time, and you know, uh, it was it was good being up there. I mean, it's nice to do comedy when you. I mean, at that point, we hadn't done comedy in how long? Oh, months. Yeah, months, yeah. which is, which for us is rare because yeah, exactly. we do comedy all the time. You know, that's that's what we do for a living. So, it's 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 a little different. But it was fun. It was so much fun just to get up there and, and experience it. It was cool. I know it was. We've talked about it a lot on, with some of the other people that have performed, and it really was a lot of fun. We should we should really think about doing it again. I think. Uh, you know, who knows how much longer this this sequestering is going to happen? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think I think as of as of like yesterday or something like that. I think I think comedy clubs will be coming back sooner rather than later I within the next that. like week or yeah. two. Yeah, I yeah. Hopefully they'll be kind of opening their doors and you know we'll get some bookings on the on the mm-hmm. books because you know everything that I had just canceled until the end of the year. Yeah, all so you're of just us. Like, yep. All like, of us the same thing. We all had stuff set on our calendars. Mm-hmm. Uh, me not so much, but everybody else I've interviewed had a lot of stuff on their calendars. And uh, it just came to a screeching halt. And so, uh, as I ask everybody, so so what have you been doing? I, I mean, a lot of us have been sitting there writing new material, uh, recording ourselves, trying to hone hone some new stuff. <laughs> yeah. I have a couple of things I want to try out on you tonight. Yeah, too, I, I mean, I, I, I've been doing a, a, a decent amount of stuff. I mean, you know, I mean, of course, just spending some time with my one year old daughter, which is awesome. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, that's that was super cool. Um, you know, spending some time with family and, and things like that. But also, definitely writing, um, working on some stuff. Um, I, I actually started working on a screenplay uh, called Karen's, uh, but uh, they, they beat me to it. They, so they wrote a series, and, and once I saw that it was cast, I was like, ah, I gotta set this aside now. And Karen's. Yeah, Karen's. Yeah, it was, it, it's this idea of it, you know, there's this whole you know the whole online thing about Karen's. Um, I just figured it would be a perfect you know little movie to kind of do. Oh, that's you know? cool. Um, yeah, so it's like I, I wrote. I literally was halfway through it and I had everything mapped out. But uh, once I saw that they were doing a series about it for like Netflix, I was like, mm-hmm. oh, okay. It's got one of the girls from like Orange is New Black in it and, and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, it's one of those things. You know, when you start writing something and then you see someone beat you to the idea, you're like, ah, oh, man, you just got to kind of start over again. And then um, what else have I been doing? I mean, um, you know, I taught, I, I did a, a couple like uh, talks, you know, um, with. Um, about like using comedy in your in your motivational routines and mm-hmm. stuff like that, um, and also you know t- I've been teaching at UNLV, which is good, um, you know because I teach you know comedy and acting over there, and uh, what, what else? I, I mean that's yeah that's pretty much about. Oh, and I taught uh, 
bedside manner to some dentists. <laughs> so so that there's all that stuff. But yeah, I mean, so, you, you know, trying to keep it as full as possible because I'm one of those people, like, I just, I sitting still is like the worst thing in the world. Oh, to me. I know. You know, there's nothing worse than being idle, right? It's yeah, like, oh. Exactly. This has been a tough time for all of us. I, I sit around the house and you can only write for so long. You can only, you know, so I, I try to do um, not as much as I want, but I, I like to spend at least two hours a day, maybe not all at one time, but at mm -hmm. least two hours a day working on something for comedy. Mm -hmm. And that usually happens almost every day. Oh, that's good. Sometimes I get sidetracked. Squirrel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. I've noticed it very challenging with with having a, a, a toddler. It, you know, it's it's been. But also with the pandemic, I, I've noticed. I mean, and there was a couple of comedians that I was talking with this about, and they were saying like, it was hard just to find the motivation. Yeah. To sit down and write when normally we do it all the time, and because it was part yeah. of our flow, yeah. right? Um, but j just to kind of you know sit down and do that when your mind's not challenging, you're not being challenged, you're just sitting there twiddling your thumbs. Well, for me, in the beginning, it was pretty easy because we only we thought it was only going to last for a few weeks. Yeah. And so we look at it as kind of like a break, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But now it's been like months, and it's I'm getting cabin fever. Uh, my girlfriend who lives with me, she, she says, okay, I've heard that joke about a million times. <laughs> <laughs> enough is enough already. But um, it's uh, so so we didn't think it was going to last that long, and here we are, several months later. It's time to get back. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, you know, I I, th I think it'll be it'll be nice. I mean, I'm I'm super. I was super stoked when you know they, they said that you know they added. I think you have 250 people in a room now and all this stuff. So so uh, and the comedy clubs you know can reopen and shows can reopen with distancing. Yep. I think even even Raiders the Raiders. Uh, next home game, they can have people at there. Oh, at, really? At there. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know exactly how they're going to do it, but um, you know, I mean, I thought I heard a number like twenty percent of capacity. Maybe, maybe. And that's and then they all each of the groups has to be um, separated. Mm -hmm. uh, however many. Yeah. But however many seats. Yeah. So how many? Ho Sixty thousand people that. Yeah. So holds? yes. Yeah, so, so they'll probably they'll probably what that's fifteen fifteen thousand or something yeah, like that. Yeah. That's, that's not that's good enough to good. get a roar of a crowd, right? Yeah. Exactly. I yeah. Uh, I have you know I've been a diehard Raider fan. Forever, and um, it was awesome that they moved here. It didn't kind of turn, it didn't turn out the way we wanted it to because nobody can go to the games until, yeah. right? Yeah, so, but it'll get there eventually, I think. Yeah, I think it's, we'll, it's yeah. yeah. I don't know though. Who was it today? The Texans. Mm -hmm. um, oh, the Titans. Titans with the COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got some COVID. COVID. Yeah. I, I'm thinking that that's gonna. They're, they might put a, a pause on this whole NFL thing until they get that under control. Which is a sad thing, but yeah. Well, I mean, baseball played through it, right? Mm -hmm. There was a lot of teams that, that had COVID and, and stuff like that, and they played through it, you know. And it, granted, they had to cancel some games, but mm -hmm. you know, they played through it. Um, so maybe, I mean, I, I just know that the Tennessee Titans are going to be at a huge disadvantage because they didn't get to practice at all. Oh, I know. So yep. it's like they're literally going in, and I think they're playing the Steelers this week. So it's it's going to be a tough uh, a tough game. They, they were mentioning today that they might postpone that game until Monday or Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So, but they need to get a handle on it. We need to get past this. We need to. Hopefully the the um, the uh, vaccine's going to come out and we can get past this whole thing because this is insanity. Yeah, no, it's 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 uh you know it's it's a crazy time and it's unprecedented. No one's yeah. ever seen it in a hundred nope. years, right? There's not many people that are alive that were nope. actually around in 1918, and yeah. if they are around, they, they can't even tell you what's going on. Right? Know where they are. Ruling. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's a hard it's a hard oh bet, God. but uh you know, but yeah, hopefully hopefully we'll get yeah. get to the get on the right the right path here. I, I'm looking forward to 2022. I, I'm writing. I'm not 20, 2021. I'm writing 2020 off. My mm -hmm. calendar is going to go from 2019 to 2021. 2020 is just going to be like erased. Yeah, so, yeah. I wish my taxes went that way. I know, right? Oh, oh my <laughs> gosh. Awesome. That's true. It's super cool. So I wanted to talk about, so one of the things I learned is that, that you were also an improv actor. Yeah, yeah. I did the show Tony and Tina's Wedding on the Strip for a long oh, time. did you really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I played Tony's best man in that show and... and um, that's it, right. Yeah, and, and I, I love that show. Actually, that's where I met my wife. She was Tina in the show. Really? Um, yeah, yeah, and uh, so I saw her get married like a thousand times before she <laughs> actually married her. You know, it's kind of it's kind of weird. I was like, oh, you're a pro at this. You know, you know my late wife and I. Anybody came to town, we went to Tony and Tina's wedding. Oh yeah, yeah, it was a fun show. The girl that played the bombshell. Oh, oh, the you mean like the stripper type? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm, yep. Oh, I had a crush on her. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Her her name is Allison. She's she's a yeah. she's a local actress. She does a lot of great stuff. Yeah, she's she's a, a lot of fun. She's a cool girl. Yeah, every time I go, she says, "You're back." <laughs> But, yeah, yeah, that was a that was a fun show to do, man. I mean, you know, because the thing is, is is 
there was like maybe five percent of the show is actually scripted. Well, tell the us, rest kind of it, give us an idea about the show. Yeah, uh-huh. tell, tell, tell the audience kind of a summary. Of so, it. so Tony Tina's wedding. The whole idea is, is you've been invited to a wedding. That's that's the whole idea. So it's like you've you've been invited to a wedding, an Italian, wedding. an Italian wedding, and you go to the wedding, and and you know throughout the night, based off of where you're kind of sitting, you kind of get these little pieces of the story, and you start to figure it out that that the groom's dad. And the bride's mother used to date back in the day, and um, and you know Tina really likes to drink, and um, you know so does the so does the the fa- father Mark, the minister, and and um, you know there's all these things, and then there's the the maid of honor who's pregnant and you know just like ready to pop, and and then there's you know the um, the best man who's like you know the drug dealer on the side, and he just kind of. You know, trying to keep it on the hush hush, and you know, it's 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 a really fun show, and, and I did it for a long time. And honestly, um, you know, that's when I when I started doing comedy, uh, you know, I used that a lot because I got really good at bantering with the audience because that's what I did mm-hmm. all the time. So when I bantered with the audience, that's all I did. So so basically, what happened is all the characters in the play they mingle with the with the audience. Mm-hmm. So you're sitting there at a dinner table, and it's as though you're at the wedding. You're one of the guests, and the participants, the actors, all come around. They they treat you like family. They talk about you. They gossip about the other cast members. It, it is a great time. I, I, we must have gone ten times. Yeah, yeah, it's a blast. Yeah, they're actually doing a virtual version of it. Are they really? Yeah, I think it's in a in a few days. They're going to put it up. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a one time thing. They're just putting it up to see how it goes. And yes, yeah, it I, might be fun. I thought the guy that played the preacher was awesome. He was mm-hmm. the coolest. It's ever. it's a fun role. It's oh, a fun role. God. I mean, I, I also like playing. You know, because because sometimes you swing in and out of different roles. I played. Uh, sometimes I played Tina's ex boyfriend, who would always show up and interrupt oh, yeah. the wedding, and that was always a fun role because you just get to get plastered. Oh, yeah. You know, just you that know, out of your mind. Are they going to bring that back to life? Do you think? Um, you know, th- they've talked about it on and off. Um, you know, I know the producers are very interested in it. I just don't know whether they will or not. Um, it's it's about finding the right space with the right mixture of things, and and you know, and it's one of the only dinner shows you know yeah. that's that's still around. So it's it's cool. So for the audience, just check the schedule here in Vegas after we get through this pandemic thing, and and see it. It's called Tony and Tina's Wedding, and I, I, I take it from take it from Dylan Dillagap. <laughs> It is the best. I love it. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a fun show. I mean, I had such a blast doing it. It was. I mean, I did it for a long time too, um, on and off. You know, because they, they they were really good about letting you go do other gigs and then coming mm-hmm. back and stuff like that. I mean, you know, so it was really awesome. It was a great yeah, show. It was a good show. So I. So that was. Is, was that your introduction to improv, or had you done something? No, no, before? no. Yeah, I'd, I'd done Second City and, mm-hmm. and and things like that. Um, so you know, I, I had a background in in improv for sure going into that because mm-hmm. that show if. To be in that show and have no improv training at all, it's really it's difficult for you, <laughs> you know, because you got to be super on, and and you can tell the people that that you know got into the show because they looked a certain part versus had a lot of training, right? Mm-hmm. Because uh, you know it, they would have a harder time than, than the rest of the cast. But it was it was it was a great show. I mean, I I love every minute of it. I would do it again, you know, if, if asked. I think you know. I, so. I love improv. I did a several years ago. Um, my son Dilbert Dillagap, he uh, little Dill, um, <laughs> little Dill. <laughs> that's what we call him, little Dill. Little Dill. <laughs> so he uh, uh, he needed an elective uh, in, in college, and he, he was overbooked. So I said, I'll pretend to be you, and I'll go take this class. And it was an improv class, and it was on Friday night, and it was a, like a four-hour class on Friday night. And what a way to end a week! It, we had, oh my gosh, that was probably one of the best college courses I ever took. And um, it, it taught me a lot about dealing with people mm-hmm. live and everything, just as you're talking about. But oh my gosh, that was a semester long, and I met some great people. Mm-hmm. And, and they thought you were Dilbert. They thought I was Lil Dil, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to this day, hey, That's Lil amazing. Dil. I know, right? So you took a college course yeah. for your kid. Yeah. Well, That's he, awesome. It's only elective. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't have been able to do anything serious. Yeah, yeah. It's not like you're doing accounting or anything, I don't right? Calculus. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> so, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. So right. <laughs> to this day, they th- they still think I'm little dill. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I, I mean, <laughs> I, had a, I I was dating a girl in college who knew Spanish really really well. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take my foreign language class and get her to take it for me online. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and uh, it didn't work out so well though because <laughs> after the first assignment it went in. Um, the professor wrote back and goes, you know, it's amazing how some of you are really good at Spanish already. <laughs> so I was like, and drop the class. <laughs> that was, already. that was the, like, yeah, like he, he, he knew, he knew. I was like. Well, little Dill wasn't that good with starting the improv. Yeah. It got better at the end. You know, we, so I'm sure that you, that if you teach this, you know. 
So for our final, we had to invite friends and family mm -hmm. to a show. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, what a blast. We got such great reviews from that. Everybody had, I, the audience, there was probably 30 of us in the class mm -hmm. and we all brought several people. So mm -hmm. the auditorium was packed. Yeah. And it was just the, the coolest thing ever. So, so that was probably 15 years ago. And I, I still remember some of the basics that I learned from that in dealing, doing comedy now. Mm -hmm. and, and interacting with people, it's it's yeah, it's it was a blast. Yeah, yeah, no, it's 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 super fun. I mean, improvs, improvs are it's it's such a fun tool to have. I mean, and a lot of people don't realize how great it is to be able to improv. Oh yeah, like like you know, people just think, oh well, well that's just like an artist thing. It's just something that you do if you're an actor. It's like no, no. dude, if you can imagine, <laughs> imagine how much better the presidential debate would have went if those guys had some improv training. <laughs> you oh, know, I knew, I knew you were gonna bring that. Up. <laughs> you know, I mean, because you know, it was a debacle. I mean, or maybe if they weren't so old, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what the yeah, deal is. Age did it. You know, but I, yeah. So my analysis from last night was, and I'm not partisan, but my analysis last night is the poor moderator was trying to like herd cats oh yeah <laughs> poor guy uh, yeah I, my analysis was was the, we're screwed like <laughs> that's, that's well, the whatever thing whatever side of the fence you're on right yeah now. whatever <laughs> side of the fence you're on i mean yeah i mean and also what people don't realize is it doesn't matter who's in office. No one's going to save you. No. You yeah. know, you have to save yourself. There's this idea that, like, oh, this person's going to come into office, and then all of a sudden, you know, everything's going to get so great that, like, yeah. everyone's going to have, have own their own house, and everyone's going to have a great job. And you're like, no, you've nope. got to save you. You you're have to save you. You're the master of your own destiny, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, but, yeah, it's because it, politicians, they at this point, they all work for their for themselves. whatever interests. Yeah, and themselves, yeah. No matter who you are. So, so I was thinking about it on the drive over here, and I thought, you know, I gotta have some kind of a joke if, if the if the presidential debate comes up. So, so <laughs> let me try this out. Okay. okay. So I'm not I'm not really political. I don't really pay attention to politics, except a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. If you remember the same sex marriage thing, that mm -hmm. everybody was it was a big thing about same sex marriage, mm -hmm. and so I'm I don't know if you're for it or you're against it, but. I was married for 44 years, and it was the same sex for that whole 44 years. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, nice. I, I, I nice. Like that. I like that. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I had a, uh, a, you know, a, a joke that, that I was, that I wrote, um, and it was actually right before the pandemic, um, you know, about, it's like, you know, these people that, like, bring these flags to the, to these protests, like the Nazi flag and, and, like, the Southern flag and stuff like that, and you're like, didn't they lose the war? Yeah. Like, like, isn't that the rule of war? Like, your flag goes away if you lose yeah. the war. Why are you still waving it? Nothing's more snowflakey than that, you right? You coming back. And not only that, but it's like the only time you should ever see the southern flag is if it's in like one of those reenactments. Oh, yeah. But why are they so interested in reenactments, they you know, lost. when you lost the war? I don't go to like the junior high school that I got beat up at yeah, and okay. go, hey, you dress like the dude that beat me up <laughs> and we're going we're gonna to reenact this because why? I mean, I don't yeah, go it's... look up old girlfriends because they ditched me. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's one of those things. That's I just, a good point. I, I never understood that, but yeah, yeah. So that's like that's been a little fun little thing I've been working on politically. Yeah. Um, so I also said that you were doing some producing. Yeah, I, I, um, kind of shows? yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we, we've been fortunate to be able to produce some stuff, um, and uh, you know, we have the show. Uh, it's a sketch comedy show called Television TV. Uh, it's been running at the uh, at Mandalay Bay for the last two years. Um, pandemic slowed it down. Um, so we'll get back into it later. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, we, we have, you know, that it's, it's a super fun show and, you know, the writers are uber talented and we've got a super great cast of like, of like great theater minds that are in Vegas here. And we just kind of, it just all worked out. They just all came together and man, it's, it's a, it's a good show. Okay. You know, I mean, when I first, when I first, you know, started the show, I was like, okay, I was like, you know, how much am I going to have to, you know, teach people or pull teeth or how much it right. But these guys are so good. Like, you know, I mean, every time we pitch we pitch scenes and sketches, they're just dynamite, you know. So when we get past the pandemic and it comes back, how can the audience find it? Uh, well, the, there's, um, you know, on Facebook, television TV, um, w which is kind of funny because when you have when you have a show called television TV, um, it, people think it's like, you know, when they're liking it, that they're liking the fact that they like televisions, mm. um, which is really odd because you get a lot of people... <laughs> Like, like I had this one lady who liked it, and she was from somewhere, you know, overseas. And she posted on the site, not about the show, but she was like, my TV's, my TV's sound is not working. How do I fix it? 
I'm like, oh, they think they think it's like some sort of tech support site. But it's so it's kind of funny. So I would say, you know, out of you know, we probably have a, a good you know hundred or 150 people on there that think they're just oh, I like a TV. So yeah, click, I can, uh, yeah. I can do that. Yeah, but but um yeah, so on Facebook, on Instagram, um on Twitter, you know, it's all television TV. Um and um yeah, that, that's that's pretty much where we're and on um uh, um you know, a lot of the sketches are up on um uh, YouTube. YouTube. On the YouTube on the YouTube as I sound like a really old guy. So go out on the Google. On the go, go to the YouTube th- yeah. thingy and and Yeah, that thingy, the YouTube thingy. Go, go on the YouTube thing, Google it and then it's up. No, but it's yeah, it's uh yeah, it's 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 a fun show. It's so much fun. Um, it's been a great a great time producing it, um, you know. And it's 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 been it's one of those shows that you go, man, it's worth every penny because the guys are so are so so funny and so good. Yeah, so great. so that's your assignment, audience, is when the show comes back to to go see it. I'm sure you. I'm, I'll, I'll look it up. I haven't seen it yet, but I'll make sure that I do. Yeah. Um, so what else can we talk about? So how long you've been doing comedy? Uh, well, th- th- that's that's the question. I, I have a I have a little bit of a of a thing with comedy where. I did it for a little while in college because, you know, it's like when you were at a bar, you would get a free beer if you did comedy, right? So I was like, ooh, I'm into that. <laughs> I'll tell some jokes, right? Um, but then as, as um, about three years into it, four years into it, three years into it, I stopped because I got really sick. And, and everything that I wrote, you know, when I was ill was just, like, just angry. And, and I'm not that type of comic, right? Um, so I, I stopped for a while. And then um, when I when I met my wife, you know, and I was still doing Tony Teen and stuff like that, I would always write stuff and be like, oh man, I you know I should send this in somewhere or, or give it to some comedian or whatever. And she was like, well, why don't you perform stand up anymore? And I was like, well, because I stopped because I got sick and you know and I was and I was super sick, like almost died sick. Mm-hmm. And um, and uh, she was like, she's like, well, why don't you why don't you go go back and do comedy again? And I was like, I don't know. And she was like, well, let's why don't you just find an open mic night, go back, and if no one laughs, I will. And I was like, oh, that's nice. Perfect. So then, so then we, I went and, and sure enough, I, it, it just kind of, you know, the cog started turning again. I started feeling like, you know, I was a comedian again. So, and this round, I've been probably back at it about seven years, I think. Yep. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, especially here in Vegas. It's it's a blast. I mean, you know, and I just love going to these clubs and just, you know, and you know, the great thing about Vegas, you get audiences from all over the place, mm-hmm. right? So, so it's it's a good, it's a, you know, I mean, if you're funny in, you know, Podunk, Idaho. Right, it could just be your jokes are funny to that small group of people, right? Mm-hmm. But in Vegas, you get such a variation. So if you can perform out here consistently and, and you know and have clubs book you, you know I think you know that that you've got a little something, right? right. You know, something for everybody, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You don't know where where your audience folks are coming from. Yeah. Which which goes back to the the drive-in movie thing. When I was up on 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 stage, <clears throat> you know I'm thinking, well, you know usually we ask where are people from. Mm-hmm. But then I realized you just look at the license plates. Yeah, they're all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. you're from New York. And especially, oh, yeah, the majority of them are all locals now, <laughs> right. right? They all, yeah, because. Oh, yeah. How many are local, right? Yeah. So, yeah. How many people at that time would have been like, yeah, so I drove up to Vegas and then drove to a driving comedy show? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you know? But yeah, so, so um, um, the feedback is really important, uh, no matter what show you're doing. Mm-hmm. And if you can get feedback from a variety of, of audiences, yeah, that's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so. I've, I've uh, several times I've asked other other folks I've interviewed. Uh, tell us about the uh, the worst time you bombed, or the first time you bombed. Oh boy, the That's first time I bombed story. was like the first time I went on stage. No. <laughs> I mean, um, gosh, I, I mean it's it's one of those things. It's like it, you know, bombing is is one of those things that it's always going to happen no matter what, no matter what level you are. You know, I mean, I, and I tell my students at UNLV all the time when they get nervous, they're like, "Oh, I don't want to bomb." I'm like, "You're going to bomb." At some point. Yeah, at some point. I'm like, if you show me a comedian that hasn't bombed, and I'll tell you either they're lying or they're not a comedian. Mm-hmm. Like, we've all bombed. It's just an, and honestly, I will bomb again, I'm sure. <laughs> it's just the nature of what it is. Sometimes you have those off nights, um, mm-hmm. and, and sometimes, you know, the crowd's just not feeling you for whatever reason, and, you know, and you've got to, and, you know, you don't think to make adjustments with your act in time, and by the time it's over, you're just like, gosh, I didn't, didn't do too well, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, I can't really think of like a specific time. Where I like just bombed really bad. I will tell you one time that I 100% thought I was gonna bomb was when I opened for the Dan Band. You know who they oh, are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes. Dan band. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I opened for the I opened for the Dan Band, and you know all I heard was horror stories about opening for bands. Oh man, you know, like like Jay Leno opened for for someone like and some dude like went up and said you suck and like pulled the microphone and it like broke and so he couldn't finish the act so he didn't get paid and he had to pay for the microphone and it was a whole thing. Oh. So like I was like oh man okay opening for a band. And, you know, we're at House of Blues, 
the place is packed. There's 1,200 people in there, you know, and I'm going up before the Dan Band. Okay, I can see where this can really they didn't come to see bomb fast. Exactly. So I was like, okay, I was like, let's just give this a shot. So, um, so you know, I went out there and, and, you know, and I thought, okay, I'm the opening act. You know, just like when opening bands are playing, everyone's just getting their drinks, no one's really paying attention. You know, there might be a handful of people that are their friends. But um, but luckily, I, I went out on stage, and everyone just got quiet and paid attention. Four and I was like, "Whoa, okay." And then I started telling some jokes, and it was and it was good. And then the audience was was right there, and I played with the audience some, and it was, yeah. I mean, it was it was an awesome. And the, and you know, I I opened, I think I did forty minutes or something like that, and it just went by like snapping your fingers. Minutes. Yeah, wow, it went by like snapping your fingers, and wow. um, and then the Dan Band went on stage, and yeah, and it was just, it was a super super cool night. It was so much fun, yeah, so I, much fun. I, uh, so several times you, you kind of, you know, you're standing in the back of the room watching the other comedians mm -hmm. and you kind of get in a sense of what the audience likes and mm -hmm. doesn't like. And, and so the, on those nights when you think, oh my God, this audience is tough. And then you go up and you, you, you blast it. You uh -huh. make it. Th those are good nights. Oh yeah. You don't think you're going to do well and you do. And it just, it just invigorates you. Yeah. Well, well yeah. Those endorphins get kicking and you're just like, it's like yeah. the best, the best rush yeah. ever. Right. I yep, mean, yep. and that's, that's part of why we do this, this this torturous thing right where it's like you know you you've learned from from either classes or trial and error and you're yep. on stage and you spend all this time of being not good and then when you get to the point where you know okay i, I think this joke is pretty you know within a certain percent accuracy is going to be good it right? out, yeah yeah to take it yeah so. yeah so it's like we torture ourselves a little bit but it's because we love that kick of endorphins right? oh i know yeah. i uh yeah so i i don't know if you were like the class clown in school uh, grammar school and stuff. I was. Yeah, I, I wasn't. I actually had a stuttering problem. Really? Yeah, and I hated speaking in front of people all the way up until high school. And um, in high school, uh, you know, I took a theater class because they said it was an easy class. I was like, oh, I'll take theater, fine. Sure. So I took a theater class, and um, and then your first assignment, she was like, oh, okay, you guys just get to write your own fairy tale or whatever, and you know, get me. So we we're in groups of like six people or whatever. And I'm just like, okay, you know, and I'm nervous as hell. And I'm like, just give me, I don't even want to say anything. I just want to stand up there. You guys say the lines. So like, and the teacher was like, you have to say a line. And I'm like, fine, give me whatever stupid line. And then I just like did the line and then like went on my way. And the teacher goes, hey, you know, we have a play that we're auditioning for after school um, next week. You should come by and audition. And I was like, sure. Mm -hmm. And then I walked out. And there was no way I was auditioning for this play. Um, and then, <laughs> and then uh, I remember I was getting ready to leave school. I was walking out the door. The theater teacher saw me. She goes, hey, aren't you auditioning? Today's the auditions. And I go, ah, no, you know something? My mom's here waiting for me. And she goes, don't worry. I'm going to put you up first. Come here. And oh. she grabs me and she throws me on stage, hands me a script. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I'm shaking because I'm like, like so nervous. I hate being in front of people. I hate it. And, um, and so I read really terribly. Um, and she still gave me a part. <laughs> um, yeah, and I met my best friend, uh, you know, one of my best friends ever doing that because we both had this role. He was a big, a, a really big dude, and, you know, I was a really thin dude. And uh, so we played this. It was in the play called The Sting, um, which was a movie back right. in the day. With and, Robert um, Redford. Yeah, yeah. And um, and we played, like, these bodyguards, and it's like we, we were like twins but not, like, look-alike twins. So it's like we, we moved the same and we walked the same <laughs> and we did all the things the same. And, and I had, like, two lines, and, and when I said these lines, people laughed and they thought it was funny, and I was like, oh, my gosh, this is really cool. And then it just kind of snowballed. And then when college even came around, she was like, she was like um, are, are you going to go to college? And I was like, dude, I, I live in a single-parent household with, you know, Two, two other brothers and you know we don't have that kind of we don't have money to go to college and she goes she goes I bet you if you audition you'll get a scholarship mm. and I was like okay and she's like I'll set you up an audition and I was like okay cool. and I auditioned and sure enough I got I got like eight colleges that called me back and offered me full rides yeah. and yeah yeah and it was it was super awesome I, so I got to pick my college it was it was it was almost like being drafted in the NFL but nowhere near as cool <laughs> but, but it was still fun yeah and just think about how nervous you were too if you hadn't have done that audition if she would have found me in that hall I would have never done that audition because yeah. I was not I was not interested at all I mean because you know I mean it, having a stuttering problem when you're a kid is such a difficult thing mm -hmm. because either a you get in fights or you just get made fun of mm -hmm. right and at some point you get tired of the fights and you just go okay I don't want to get you know I'm just gonna you just take it and move on and then once I kind of got over you know the the stuttering 
I was just a normal kid, but I still had that in the back of my mind. Like I didn't like to talk in front of people. I didn't want to yeah. say anything, you know, anything that could emb- be embarrassing. I didn't want to do it. Well, it certainly has changed for you now. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, now, yeah. It's like uh, it's. Uh, I always tell my wife. I go, you know, my wife will be. She'll be like, shh. Like when it's late at night, and I'll go, hey, people pay me to run my mouth. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. I get paid for front of my People mouth. pay me to do a lot of this. <laughs> I had a, I had a uh, friend that used to do uh, motivational speaking, mm-hmm. and he was disabled. And he used to, one of his opening lines was, you know what the two biggest fears are in life? Uh, death and public speaking. Yes. You know what the third fear is? Dying while you're public speaking. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, that, it's like that Jerry Seinfeld joke. He used to say, uh, he, he, was like, he was like, the first fear is public speaking, second fear is death. So you would rather be the guy um, that they're giving the eulogy about rather than the guy that's giving the eulogy. <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah. How yeah. funny is that? Yeah, it's very, it's a super, super interesting, but yeah, that's, that's a funny little take on it. But yeah, I mean, you know, public speaking is, and, and now I don't, I don't look at it, you know, my wife, she's a performer too, and she, you know, we don't think about like, oh, public speaking is like a difficult thing. No. But for so many people, it is. Yeah. That's why these public speaking conferences make so much money, right? It's like, you know, teach people to public speak. Big money oh, absolutely. That. I'm absolutely. going to branch out into that at some point. I, I, I've been doing a little bit of research, and Isaac's been helping me out a little bit. And I, but in public speaking, it's it's very, it's it's very rewarding for one thing when you mm-hmm. can, even if you only change one or two people's minds mm-hmm. in, in the audience. I think it's it's worthwhile. You know? Yeah. So I'm going to try that out. So then, uh, some more stuff out of your bio. You also sing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Um, a Renaissance guy. Well, I mean, you know, it's something that that in college you learn, right? You know, because it's part of it's part of the theater program. They're like, oh, well, you need to learn to sing. They want to try to make you a triple threat. So they teach you to dance, they teach you to sing, they teach you to act. Like that's wow. part of the thing, and that's a smart thing to do because that's how you work, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and um, they, so I, I learned to sing, and and uh, there was a '50s diner out here called Roxy's Diner, and uh, it was inside the Stratosphere, and all the all the um, the wait staff would play 50s characters, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, you would sing 50s songs. So that's how I started started really singing. That's the first, like, I guess, paid gig that I ever had. Really? Was, was that, yeah. Oh, and then, fun. yeah, and then it's, it's you know, kind of branched to small things. But I, I mean, you know, singing's not, not something that I, I mean, it's something that's fun, um, but it's, it's not something I went after as, like, heavily as I did co- comedy. But yeah, singing, singing is a, it's, it's a fun thing. Yeah. Well, 50s music is fun to sing anyway because it's just kind of like, it's not serious. It's yeah. fun. Mm-hmm. Do up, do up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was all. Yeah, it's, I mean, I used to do. You know, I mean, in the diner, I played the nerd. You know, so I always had like the sweater vest with the with the L on it because everyone had nicknames and tape on the glasses, right? tape on the glasses yeah. and all that stuff. And you know, I wore like uh, the wingtip Doc Martens and cool. just yeah, it was it, it was fun. Um, you know, but yeah, it was, it, it was it was a cool gig. It was a great place to work. I mean, you know, you made really good money for right. for what it was. I mean, it was a union gig, so you're making. I mean, in college, you're making that kind of money. It's, nice. it's awesome. Like pretty much everyone that went to UNLV at that time in the theater program worked there. Right. <laughs> yeah, and then we'd always cover each other's shifts, like like. Oh, you gotta go do a do a gig. Okay, I got your shift here. Okay, I gotta go do a gig. Can you cover this? You know. How nice is that? Yeah, it was it was it was an ideal place. Yeah, it's not there anymore, but yeah. Well, that sounds like it was a lot of fun. How long did you do that? Um, gosh, I did that for a long time. I mean, it, you know, it was one of those jobs. It was just so fun, you know, that I, I tried to hold on to it as much as I did. Like like even when I graduated college and I went out and, and did like shows and and stuff like that. Even when I was doing Tony and Tina's, I would still you know, work there part time and stuff like that. So I held on to it as long as I possibly could. Where do you find time to be a parent? Uh, <laughs> that's the hardest thing I know. Um, is, you know, I mean, luckily, my wife is like the best mother on the planet. Like she is so for someone that didn't like kids and she hated kids up until we had kids. Like she was always like, Nope, I hate kids. Get that kid away from me. Like she, she didn't like kids at all. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know, I mean, I, I was, I was on tour with, um, Supercross, um, you know, the motorcycle racing thing. Mm-hmm. So basically my job was to go around to the television stations and, and talk about the race and, and kind of educate people about, about these, you know, Supercross events. And um, she came into, into a city, and uh, we were up in San Francisco, I think. And uh, she was like, man, and usually when we both, any of us gets a gig like that, you know, we go and we just see as much as we can in the city because it's like a free trip, right? Um, she comes up there, and, and she would meet me in most of the cities that I was at. And uh, she comes up to San Francisco, and she's like, gosh, I'm really tired. And I was like, you're tired? I was like, okay, well, maybe it's, you've been flying around a lot. Maybe it's, maybe it's that. And she's like, yeah, maybe. And then she was like, gosh, every time I eat, I get this heartburn. And I was like, are you pregnant? She was oh. like, 
I don't, I don't know, maybe. So then we come home, and she takes a test. She goes, oh, my God, I'm pregnant. And I was like, oh. And then I was like, what do you do? Oh, my gosh. And I was what like, do, do we do? go to the emergency room? So we went to the emergency room. <laughs> so we did. We went to the emergency room. And uh, we go to the emergency room, and uh, we go up front, and the lady goes, uh, reason for visit? And I go, possible pregnancy? <laughs> yeah, that's an emergency. <laughs> and, and, and the lady goes, oh, honey, that's your OBGYN. <laughs> and I was like, okay. What's and she, that? Yeah, and she was like, she's like, but don't worry, we'll confirm it. And I'm like, okay. She's like, go pee in this cup. I go, who, me or her? <laughs> you know, you know, it's, like, that's what I knew about kids. We, we know nothing, you know? I know, right? Um, but my wife, I mean, as soon as that baby came out, it's like these instincts just kicked in, and she just goes, she goes, oh, my gosh, this is the greatest thing I've ever done. Yeah. And so she literally, I mean, the baby was, I think, three months old, four months old, and she goes, you know, I, I could be a stay-at-home mom. Really? And I was like, do you want to be a stay-at-home mom? And and she goes, yeah, I want to be. And I said, okay, cool. You can, you know, nice. you can do that. You know, I have a similar story. My wife and I were married for ten years before we had kids, and we both came from large families, and we did not get to move rugrats away from us, right? <laughs> so then one of us, her, decided that we should try kids out because my brothers are all wimps; they all have girls, <laughs> and so there was nobody to carry on the Dillagap name. Uh. And so um, we said, okay, all right, okay, one time. And so little Dill came along, uh-huh. and uh, but what was funny is, um, um, so the night you know when they when they're ready to deliver the water breaks right, mm-hmm. and so this was a, a great story. So I used to have to work one weekend a month, and so this was Friday night, uh, just before the weekend that I had to work, and we're laying in bed watching TV, and all of a sudden I hear this, and she goes, "My water broke," and I go, "Okay, so what do we do now?" And I'm like really nervous, you know, and. We'd gone through the rehearsal and had the bag ready to go. So she jumps up and I thought that she was gonna hop in the car and we're gonna go to the hospital. No, she hops up and bakes brownies. What? I go, what are you baking brownies for? She goes, we're gonna use them at the hospital to barter for a better room. <laughs> you know, I, I, that was some advice I got. Like people go, people go, if you really want them to, to really take care of you, bring them pizza oh yeah or something like that you know so so yeah. i was like oh okay cool you know because yeah. they work they work really hard yeah I, I mean i i got informed that she was going to have the baby when i was actually teaching at unlv right. i was in the middle of class and my wife never calls me during class and we were going to go out of town and you know she, it was a thursday and she went into the doctor to see the doctor and she'd had a headache a couple of days and stuff like that and you know and so she went in the doctor and it was just her a regular checkup so we thought everything was going to be fine, and he goes, yeah, yeah, I think you need to go to the to the hospital. And she goes, why? He goes, I'm probably going to have this baby. And she was like, really? And then, so then she calls me and goes, I think we're going to have the baby today. And I'm in class, and I'm like, what? Oh, and all my students are like, what happened? I'm like, oh, I'm having a baby. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> class dismissed. They were like, woo. <laughs> right, so so I, was, I was like 32 when we had our first, when little Dill came along. And so he goes to, you know, he starts school, and by that time he had a little brother. And so we were like old first time parents, right? So you go to back to school night and we're standing in the back of the room. And <laughs> I remember this one particular time the teacher goes, and whose grandparents are you? <laughs> <laughs> or so the second son was totally different. If you have another child, they're gonna be diametrically opposed. Mm-hmm. And so our second son was a terror. And we go to back to school night and they'd wanna know whose parents we were. And we told them and they go, oh, sit down, I wanna to talk to you. Uh, <laughs> sit down, so I wanna talk to you. That's funny, well, well, I mean, you know, on the upside, you get some good material out of that, oh, right? I know, yeah. kids are, oh, I have got some great material. Like, I told them both that the only reason that they still are alive is because we knew, his, the mother and I knew that they would uh, provide us with great, awesome grandchildren, and mm-hmm. they did. So that's the only reason oh, they're still there alive, you go. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're like, otherwise, you'd <laughs> yeah, be done. Yeah, they gone. Yeah. <laughs> My yeah. youngest came out, so they're diametrically opposed, like I said. So the first one came out, he's quiet, he's, he's demure, easy, goes to sleep, stays asleep, yeah, blah, blah. Second one comes out a couple of years later, has a big cigar and a beer going, let's party. <laughs> yeah. It just went downhill from there. Yeah. So be prepared, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the kids yeah. are fun, though. They're yeah, you know, kids are, kids are a blast. I don't know how my mom raised all of us, but. How know, many, how many kids in your family? Uh, well, my mom had four. Mm-hmm. And and then my dad had one from a previous marriage, so there's five all together. But and where were you in the? I, I'm second to last. Oh, yeah. So you yeah, got so away with talk murder. about talk about middle child syndrome. Well, well, it's one of those things. I didn't really get away with murder so much as I 
I just, you know, I either A, never got caught because I was pretty <laughs> sneaky, or B, I was just like, you know, I mean, I, I just kind of did my own thing. And I think that's really what made me very, a lot of independent. Like, I'm one of those guys that just goes, oh, okay, what do you want to do? Okay, cool, let's do this. Yeah, or let's start it, you know? Yeah. And people go, wait, what? I'm like, yeah. Like, someone would come up to me and go, hey, I got this idea, you know, I kind of want to pitch your way. And I go, okay, cool. And then they'll go, yeah, what do you think? And I'm like, okay, cool. So tomorrow yeah. we'll start. And they're like, wait, whoa, what? Don't you have to check with someone? Like, let's do nope. it. I mean, that's the thing about the artist is like, is like, there's this, there's this idea that like, you know, you gotta wait for someone to give you something, right? Like as an artist, oh, well audition, and oh, do this, and oh, do that. And you know, and I tell my students at UNLV, I'm like, dude, don't wait, no. you know, create your own stuff. It, yeah, it's great when people give you stuff or when you or when you you know audition and get something, but don't wait for those guys. No, you yeah. know, start doing your own thing. You know, learn to learn to write comedy, learn your own one man show, do whatever. Right. I mean, and and that's that's like one thing that that I think is priceless is like don't wait. Like I know so many actors I went to I went to college with that never once worked. They didn't work one day in their life, in this whole the whole. And they went to college for that. Can you guys imagine that? The, the, our, our Going to college audience. and never working when you leave. I know, oh right? my goodness, it's it's like I mean, it's brutal. So it's like you know, I, I always say, look, just go out there and, and create. You know, that's what that's what artists do. You know, I mean, if if you're not getting booked on comedy shows, create your own comedy show. If you're not, you know, if if, if you don't feel like you're getting up enough, you know, make your own or or write your own show or do something. You know, don't don't sit there and wait. So for the audience, Jason's referring to our production team behind the cameras. They're all really great people. Yes, um, yes, they're re real great people. They've been doing um, an awesome job uh, yep. for the last twenty-four um, podcasts. They've been doing an awesome job. So thanks, you guys. Yeah, and they've worked with all kinds of professional people, like Justin Bieber and and oh, little, yeah. little Wayne. Anyone with little in their name, they've yeah. worked with them. Little, little Dill, little Little Dill, Little Little Wayne, Little Little Yachty, Little <laughs> Little Bougie. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of littles out there. Littles. Yeah, they worked with every, everyone with little in their name. No one with big in their name, though. No, they're not that experienced yet. <laughs> yeah. No Biggie Smalls. They, they weren't around then. I don't think they're they're a young crew. So there's one guy who who is an old soul though. He's he's like yeah, I, I think, think he's so. about 75 maybe. Yeah, he's I feel like cool. He's 75. He's cool though. Yeah. That's it's, it's a good show. group. It's a good group. Pretty cool. Elijah. So, so you you you've performed for several years and you've been all over the country. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it's 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 awesome. I mean, it's it's cool. I I, I always just say I'm, I've got to be the luckiest, most fortunate person ever. Uh, just to just to I mean, you know, just to walk on stage. Every night I walk on stage, I always go, man, you know, I, I got to be the luckiest bum out there, man. You know, because I mean, can you imagine? It's like it's like yeah, you know, th there this. can be there's thousands and thousands and thousands of comedians, and this place picked me yeah. to give me stage time. You know this th this group picked me. These people picked me to do to do pitch their product. These people picked me to write something for them. You know they picked me to pitch to punch up their script. They could have picked anyone in the world, yeah. but I mean it's so cool to be like I mean, you know I don't I don't work a nine to five. You know I don't have to go to work where someone you know gets on me every day and says oh well be sure these this is filed or this is what I don't have, I don't have to put up with that. I'm like dude I'm the luckiest guy on the planet man. Yep. I'm the very, luckiest guy on the planet. Very similar. I spent a billion years working. And after I retired, it's like you look back and you go, man, how can you do that day after day? Same old stuff. So doing the comedy thing, you're yeah. sort of the master of your own destiny. And you're right. So I think if they ask you back a second time, you're even luckier. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. I mean, you know, we, yeah, when you get and especially when you get on like those regular spots where it's like you can kind of stop at the club whenever and they'll put you up or or, you know, or they book you regularly. I mean, it's such a cool thing. And that's one thing about that's It's great here about Vegas. There's so many comedy clubs, you know, you're getting good with a decent amount of them. It's like, you know, you just kind of you know pick whatever one or you could hit several shows in a night mm -hmm. uh, you know and I love those nights uh, I mean you know when you can bounce from show to show to show and be like oh I just did this show and then I did this and then yeah. you know I mean catch an early a mid and a late show and you know it's like you work three shows in a night it's great you know? when does the book come out you know what, the, the book <laughs> yeah yeah I, gotta, I, I should write that maybe yeah, I don't know. It said I, you're, you're a writer yeah 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 I, I need to yeah maybe I should write that book I don't, I don't I know was, I was I, I've been thinking about doing that too writing a book um Everybody's writing a book. Everyone's writing a book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if I wrote a book, I, I would, I'd be like, I, I don't know what I. Would, what would you call your book if you wrote it? I'd probably be like, the world according to this guy who doesn't know. Yeah. S H I T. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like maybe that's what I'd call it. I don't know. You know, because I, I, I always feel like I'm. You know, I, I'm not a. I don't feel like I'm an expert in, in anything, but I feel like I'll outwork anybody. You know, yeah, that's, but that's you my have thing. a story. Yeah. I mean, the, the things that you've told us tonight, that, that'd be all great stuff in, in yeah. a book. And think about somebody that's that's sitting out there going, 
oh, I don't know, should I get into comedy? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, yeah, the, the, answer, the answer is yes. Anyone that, yeah. like, even when you have people that come up to you after a show and go, man, should I get into comedy? I always go, yeah, because here's the deal. You know, we all have to lay on that bed at the end of our lives, right? Yeah. And look up at the ceiling and go, did I do what I wanted to do? Yeah. You know, and, and regret is one thing that you, that, that, is a tough pill to swallow when you're sitting there like that, right? It's like we all got it. We all go. We all get there eventually. So live your life and do. If if you wanted to do comedy, do comedy. If you wanted yeah. to start a band, start a band. If you wanted to, you know, work on work on a film, do that, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, don't. Do it. It's it's too. I mean, and when I got sick, that's when I really, you know, got this whole philosophy of like, dude, do it. Because yeah. you never know. You yeah, know, life you, is... you you never know. It's it's quick. It comes. It you know goes like this. And and you know when I got sick, it's like I thought I had the world at my feet. And then it's like all of a sudden you have nothing, know. you know, and you're just laying there going, I hope I live. I mean, that's a tough, that's a, that's a crazy place to be. And then, and then it's like, you know, and then you get out of there and you build your things back up, you build your life back up, you know? And it's like, I mean, when I got out of there, I had nothing. Yeah. I was in the hospital for months. And it's an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like I had a small little check from, from um, uh, Aflac <laughs> that I happen to have. I had a small little check. So I went and I bought a, uh, an SUV off the side of the road. It was like twelve hundred bucks because I was like, oh, I need a car, and it, it was just this old beat up SUV, but it ran and it was good, and you know now it's like, you know, I mean, I I buy a car every three years, oh, nice. right? <laughs> you know, it's and great. You, built it, you you started back at zero yeah. and you built it. Back. Yeah, and it's and it's all based off of just just living life, and I just get to have fun. Yeah. I mean, gosh, that's such a cool thing we're in. I mean, you know, we just get to make people laugh every night. So I'll get people asking me how um, how how you do that. You seem so natural and everything. And I tell them, well, you know, there's a lot of rules that you have to follow for comedy. To, mm-hmm. And it's it's really a lot more, it's a lot harder work than you think it is. Mm-hmm. And the easier that we make it look, um, the better it is for the audience. And oh, I absolutely. Go, really? There's rules and stuff? And, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and that's the thing is like, you know, th- th- there's, and what people don't realize is, there's different ways you can learn the rules. You can you can like take a class and learn that way and kind of build that way, or you can you know just hit the slopes and just take yeah. it take it on the chin every night when you get up and open trial night, and error. You know, so it's like or a combination. You know, or a combination. Yeah. I mean, definitely you're gonna you're gonna have to do the open open mics and, and oh, yeah. you know kind of get that feel for it. But I, I'm a I'm a fan of like you know because people say some people say oh well you can't make someone funny you're either funny or you're not and I'm like well you know it's it's kind of like a sport you're you're gift you could be gifted at it right Mm -hmm. like lebron james is amazing he's he's a great basketball player i mean he's playing in the finals tonight if anyone's curious um but you know if he doesn't go and practice and work hard someone's going to be better than him i mean and you may have that natural talent yeah you got to keep it yeah you got to keep it and you got to keep it honed in and Mm -hmm. that's that's what it's about it's like it's like if you have some talent keep working at it and learn you know go to the go to the class and learn as much as you can if that's your style you know um but if it's not your style that's fine too you know and and you have a point there There there's some people that are naturally gifted mm-hmm. um, and some people have to really work at the craft like I, I can remember one night we were doing this comedy show Isaac was hosting and he had this new comedian come out and it was a 10 year old girl oh she yeah she was absolutely hilarious at 10 mm-hmm. years old yeah and you know that she doesn't have much experience behind her because she's only 10 yeah she's only 10 yeah and so there was some natural talent and it made me inside my head think uh am i really in the right career field here <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah. Right? But yeah well i mean yeah and, and sometimes you get those kids that are that are just dialed in and they can yeah. and they, they know how to make people laugh and and they just have a have a good feel for for laughter you know and then some people you know don't they've got to work at it a little harder and that's okay yeah, that's you know right. it's like you know but you know at the end of the day though it's like you know you know hard work beats out talent you know, you can be talented. If you don't work at it, you're, you're going to yeah. get surpassed by someone that outworks you. And what you say is usually true with 95% of the comedians that, that we've interviewed. Mm-hmm. There was one, I was just totally amazed by his, his story. He started out, got up on stage. He'd been doing, I think, music or something like that before. Mm-hmm. And then he just started doing comedy, and he just it, it just went. Yeah. It's like, wow, what an amazing story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's why I always, t- I always tell people, I'm like, dude, if you think you should do comedy, do comedy. Yeah. You know, at do, least try do comedy. At least try it, yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, the worst that could happen, okay, so so what, you bomb. You yeah. know, Did everyone you bombs at some no. point. You're not going to die because of it. It's like, you know, and, and, you know, and I don't think our society, you know, embraces failure enough. No. It's like, you know, you're going to fail so much more in your right. life than you are going to succeed, you know. Just, they'll give you a participation trophy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's totally true. I mean, I, I think it's... Uh, you know that's that's an important lesson to learn and i wish that was something that someone told me when i was younger like like dude you're gonna fail way more than you succeed and don't be afraid of failure failure doesn't mean you're a bad person or that you suck 
it's I, just I think the key there, and I know you'll agree, is you have to learn from that failure though. Mm-hmm. Why did I fail? Yeah. How can I do it better next time? Yep. You know, what should I not have done? What should I have done better? Yeah. Oh, so absolutely. You, learn, you have to learn from it. Um, so it's 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 a hard craft, but it's a lot of fun. I every time I go up on stage, you know, I I don't know if uh, if you're like me, but I'll script out what I'm going to talk about, mm-hmm. and I never do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, I do like like I'll make like almost like when you're a musician, you know how you make a how they make a set list of the songs they're gonna do. I kind of make I have like a little set list, like certain you know bits I name them. Mm-hmm. You know, like oh, this is this is the the casino cocktail waitress mm-hmm. joke, and I and I'll write that out. And, and there's then, a whole bunch you know, of and, yeah, yeah, and there's a whole little jokes that are in mm-hmm. there. You know, that's just in that bit that I do. Um, but yeah, th- there's a lot of times where I just toss it to the wind, or, or you know, or it's it's like when you go out on stage and you and you tell your first couple jokes and you know they're good jokes, and you know the audience doesn't react that's when you that's when you know you kind of got to go okay let's pause this for a second and go out and let's draw this audience in some right let's let's them. talk to them you know you know by going you know by the simple things which which a lot of comics do like like oh where are you from what are you doing you know but the thing is 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 what what you know the the um I, I don't know what you call it. the the uh, talent in that is is being able to make jokes off of what they where they are where they're from or right. or when you ask them what's the deal here or are you guys married are you you know it, when you're when you throw those little things out there um, I think I think that's that's an important thing I mean I used to have a joke you know that I used to do years ago where I would I would you know say uh, you know are you are you guys dating they go oh yeah 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 okay what if you know you came home and he wanted you to do this. Would you do it? <laughs> and, you know, oh these, and, and, and you know, and it's such because they're used to people going like, "Oh well, you know, where are you from?" They're used yeah. to that. They're not used to someone going like, "What if it, what if he came home one night and he was like dressed in a speedo and was like, ah, oh, punch me in the face?" Yeah. <laughs> like, would that be something that you were down I did that for? Last night. <laughs> you know, yeah. Could you imagine that? You know, is that something that they're like, "Yeah, let's," you know? I mean, and sometimes you're, you know, and, and you get the answer, and the answer is sometimes even funnier. Like the girls like, "Yeah, I'd beat him till he's in traction." <laughs> you know. You're like, you that's know, awesome. I, I, I do that. I call that situational comedy mm-hmm. where you take advantage of, of the situation that you're in. You know, if you're sitting around a table at a restaurant or somewhere and, or just in a group of people and, and you just take advantage of whatever the situation is and come up with something funny. Mm-hmm. So sometimes on stage, I'll do that too. I'll, I'll, um, I'm not very good at it yet, but I'm getting better, is, is talking to the audience and mm-hmm. doing situational stuff. And yeah. I, haven't, I haven't quite done that yet, but I'll yeah. try that. Yeah, you see, that, that's, a, that's like when I first started doing comedy, I would talk to the audience and sometimes not even do any material. And, and eventually I had to go stop talking to the audience, Jason, do some material, because yeah. you're going to need this someday, right? Exactly, like, right. yeah, because my strength is in talking to the audience. Like, like I had some, you know, because of Tony and Tina's. Yeah, exactly. Because my job was literally to mess with the audience all night. That's yep. all I did was make, yep. make jokes with the audience. Comedy. Yeah, so yep. it's, it was just like, um, so I had to like kind of push that aside and just be like, don't talk to the audience tonight, only do this. Only, you know, just... Yeah. Do your stuff. Do your stuff. Do your, and then and then you know. But now it's like you know. After all this time, you know, you get to the point where you can just kind of intertwine it nice and easy. And it's like you can go out and ask a couple of questions, and then ask another question that sets up your next joke. Right. And that's really when you feel like you're in a really good flow, right? You bet. Yeah. yeah. So so sometimes for me, is I'll, I'll have a set list going, and then I, I go blank for a second. I don't mm-hmm. know if you've ever done that. Too. Oh, dude, I, if I can tell you how many times I've <laughs> gone blank on stage. You have to make it. You can't. You can't. Let the audience know that you're sweating up there, so you just yeah. kind of go off on some tangent that you know that works. It's kind of like improv. I wanted to mention that. Mm-hmm. I know we're getting short on time, but in improv, when you watch Whose Line Is It Anyway mm-hmm. or any of those improv shows, those guys look amazing. But what I've learned is, and I don't want to give away any secrets, but a lot of that stuff is canned. So they have a lot of this stuff already in the back of their head. They just change the names or the situation to fit whatever they're doing mm-hmm. now, which makes it look incredibly natural. Yeah, yeah, you, you, and and there's there's a lot of with improv. There's a lot of tricks to the trade, yep. right? It, you know, like like you can you can literally make a whole show and it seems different, but it's literally the basics of this yep. one game that's put through yep. over and over again, or they just name it differently or whatever. That's yep. why there's so many different names for theater games. You know, yep. it's like some people call it party quirk, some people call it you know character party, some people you know there's all these different and when things. they ask for suggestions from the audience yeah just plugging it in yeah but whose line those guys oh, you want to talk about you want to talk about dialed in improv yeah. act those guys are just amazing like I, wayne I, brady is is killer i know i had He's an opportunity so to hang out with ryan um going blank on his name brian oh the tall tall yeah. dude on the show yeah, oh, yeah i'll get it in a second i yeah. just went blank help but um <laughs> one night we were at a, a comedy show and he was there and we got to hang out with him for a little mm-hmm. while it was kind of fun did he do a set that night um, no, he was just in the audience. Oh, he's just hanging out. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It was Leno's thing that he does in Long Beach or wherever that is. Oh, okay. And it was really good. We had a lot of fun. That's cool. So, um, you know, Jason, 
every time I do these podcasts, I have the terrible responsibility of saying that we're coming to the end. We're coming our, to the end of our podcast. Time is short. Yes. The moon is coming up. <laughs> <laughs> the sun has gone down, but yes. the moon is coming up. The moon is coming up. But I want to. One of the things I wanted to, to share with the audience is how can they find you? Uh, of social media. How can they find yeah, me? Well, Stalk me. House. <laughs> um, well, you have a new yeah, house now. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. At my new house. Um, no, uh, uh, if you, yeah, I mean, it's it, everything is Jason Outlaw Comedy. If you look up, you know, jasonoutlawcomedy.com is my website. Uh, Jason Outlaw Comedy on, um, on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Um, the Google. And then, and then on the Google, if, if you do the Google. Um, if you, you can always look me up on IMDb as well. I've done some movies and, and stuff like that. Um, Jason you, Outlaw. Yeah, you probably don't want to watch any of the movies that I did, but <laughs> you're like, this one leaves something to be desired. But I got paid, no. and I got no, no, credit IMDb. Were, yeah, exactly. Hey, you, you take the credits as they come. No, um, you know, yeah, I've been fortunate enough to do some cool little shows. But yeah, I mean, um, yeah, you can find me on, on all that stuff. And, you know, my website's probably the easiest thing to, to find me on. Jason know. Outlaw. Jason, Jason, Jason Outlaw comedy dot com. Dot com. Yeah, because there's another Jason Outlaw who lives in like Washington D.C. Oh. and he does like uh, I, I don't know. It seemed like he did fashion or some oh. something like that. Fashion like, comedy. Yeah, I'm like that's not my thing. Oh. I'm like I got nothing on that. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, look at this. Yeah. Look at this. Fashion, making a fashion. Do you see this? Yep. This is yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I would. Well, you did go through the green room and the makeup for tonight. So yes. Yes. Cast, I, right? Yes. That's yeah. why I look pleasantly pale. <laughs> So to our audience members, we really appreciate you coming every week to, to, to see our podcast. We hope you're enjoying them. Give us some feedback. Tell us what you like and what you'd like to see us do. Or if, if there's a comedian that you'd like us to interview, let us know because we're, we're always excited to interview new comedians. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, on behalf of Tickle Me Comedy and the Blue Zone Comedy Tour, uh, I want to thank you for participating and watching this episode of, of, Blue, of Tickle Me Comedy podcast. So good night. See you next time. Bye-bye.